I don't know if I'm started or not. We'll have to see. Hello. I guess I have been for 10 seconds. All righty. Hello, hello, hello. It is me, Laura Brixen. I am the principal of St. Bernard's School in Thiefer Falls, and this is St. Bernard's Books with Mrs. Brixen. It is, is it Tuesday? No. Thanks, Eleanor. It's Tuesday, um, April 21st, 2020. I had to think about not only what day of the week it is, I had to think about what number it is and what month it is. So I don't know if you're like me, everything's kind of blending together. But this is number 23. Please make sure that you go in and you comment, you say hi or something so that I can see that you're here. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, <laughs> and I see that this is Zare has already queued in, has already said hi. Hello, Mrs. Zare. I bet you Kendall's there too. Great job yesterday on the um, morning meeting with Mrs. Zare. So that was great. That was, thanks for including me. So I really, really appreciated it. So that we're going to start today. We're going to start today with, um, with a little beginning of song. Oh, hold on. We've got, we've got to get past the ads. Oh, technology. Woo. everybody here today it is wonderful 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 to see everybody uh the weather is getting a lot better Woo i'm really anxious to get outside because i love working out in the yard and it's just a good time for me so you can see i am here at home and we have our joke our joke for today is what's black and white and goes around and around it's black and white and goes around and around. A penguin in a revolving door. Ah! <laughs> a penguin in a revolving door. It's black and white. It goes round and round. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, um, your challenge for today, I need some outside stuff. So, I would love it if you guys could make, you know, the big thing is that people are making hearts, you know, they're making hearts and they're kind of putting it on windows and paper and stuff like that. Well, now that it's outside, I would love it if you could either um, find a heart, you know, maybe there's like a, some leaves or make a heart out of nature. Maybe take some sticks or some leaves and make them into a heart on your driveway or take some chalk, sidewalk chalk and draw something on the driveway. As long as it's a heart that's outside, take a picture of it, take a video of it, put it out there on our Facebook so we can share that with people, okay? Um, and you know, if you live in an area where maybe there's neighbors, you know, maybe with a parent's permission, parent's permission, and maybe they'll be with you, you can go and leave them a little heart on their steps or their driveway or or whatever so i know the college girls did that for me and i was just like ah! and i just thought it was great and wonderful anyway so it's so great to see all of you i see mrs zares on aurora hello aurora good to see you sweet pea um and axel and adeline okay axel and adeline okay great hello yes i see axel you know, you can do Axel with your plants, you know, once they're done blooming and stuff like that, you can take those bulbs and plant them in the ground and then they can come up next year and stuff like that. So let's, that is awesome. It's our own little science experiments and stuff like that. 
just a reminder, if for some reason you miss a, a, a story day, please go to this website. I do realize last, uh, yes, we had a little technical difficulty yesterday. We don't have yesterday's video on YouTube yet, but it is coming very soon. Um, and also I'm having some technical difficulties. I was trying to combine our videos that Mrs. Zare and I made into one video if you missed yesterday at 1030. And so um, keep that in mind. I will, those will be coming up shortly. Whew. But anyways, I hope everything's going well for you guys. And here we go. Let's continue with Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Blue. And so as you know, Peter, he is our main character. He is our fourth grader. And his little brother, they call him Fudge. He's two and a half years old. And he just got a new little turtle named Dribble. <laughs> named Dribble. Remember they had um, his dad's, uh, one of his employers or something like that. The big account came and stayed with them. And they were just, you know, Fudge was causing all sorts of trouble and stuff like that. Now we're going to continue. <clears throat> You know, this is, this is my hearing aid, and it just fell out of my ear. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on just a second. That wasn't weird at all. Okay. <laughs> Chapter three, the family dog. Sorry. Nobody ever came right out and said that fudge was the reason my father lost the Juicy O account. But I thought about it. My father said he was glad to be rid of Mr. Yarby. Now he could spend more time on his other clients, like the Toddle Bike Company. My father is in charge of the new TV commercial. I thought maybe he could use me in it since I know how to stand on my head. <laughs> but he said he wasn't planning on any, having any headstanders in the commercial. My grandma taught me to stand on my head when I spent the night at her house. I can stay up for as long as three whole minutes. I showed my mother, my father, and Fudge how I can do it right in the living room. They were all impressed, especially Fudge. He wanted to do it too. So I turned him upside down and tried to teach him, but he always tumbled over backwards. Right after I learned to stand on my head, Fudge stopped eating. He did, he did it suddenly. One day he ate fine and the next day, nothing. No, eat, he told my mother. She didn't pay too much attention to him until the third day. When he still refused to eat, she got upset. You've got to eat, Fudge, she said. You kind of grow up to be big and strong, don't you? No, grow, Fudge said. That night, my mother told my father how worried she was about Fudge. So my father did tricks for him while my mother stood over his chair and trying to get some food into his mouth. But nothing worked, not even juggling oranges. Finally, my mother got the brilliant idea of me standing on my head while she fed fudge. I wasn't very excited about standing on my head in the kitchen. The floor is awfully hard there, but my mother begged me. She said, it's important for fudge to eat. Please help us, Peter. So I stood on my head. When fudge saw me upside down, he clapped his hands and laughed. <laughs> when he laughs, he opens his mouth. <laughs> That's when my mother stuffed some baked potato into it. But the next morning, I put my foot down. No, I said. I don't want to stand on my head in the kitchen or anywhere else, I added. If I don't hurry, I'm going to be late for school. Don't you care if your brother starves? She asked. No, I told her. Peter, what an awful thing to say. Oh, he'll eat when he gets hungry. Why don't you just leave him alone? That afternoon, when I came home from school, I found my brother on the kitchen floor playing with boxes of cereals and raisins and dried apricots. My mother was begging for him to eat. No, 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 Fudge shouted. He made a terrible mess dumping everything on the floor. Please stand on your head, Peter, my mother said. It's the only way he'll eat. No, I told her. I'm not going to stand on my head anymore. I went into my room and slammed the door. I played with Dribble until supper time. Nobody ever worries about me the way they worry about fudge. And if I decided not to eat, they'd probably never even notice. That night during dinner, fudge hid under the kitchen table. He said, I'm a doggy, woof, woof, woof. 
It was hard to eat with him under the table, pulling on my legs. I waited for my father to say something, but he didn't. Finally, my mother jumped up. I know, she said. If Fudgy's a doggy, he wants to eat on the floor, right? If you ask me, Fudge never even thought about that. But he liked that idea a lot. He barked and nodded his head. Woof! So my mother fixed a plate and he put it under the table. Then she reached out, she petted him like he was a real dog. My father said, aren't we carrying this a little too far? My mother didn't answer. Fudge ate two bites of his dinner. My mother was satisfied. After a week of having him eat under the table, I felt like we really did have a family dog. I thought about how great it would be if we could trade in fudge for a nice cocker spaniel. That would solve my problems. <laughs> I'd wake him and feed him and play with him. He could even sleep on the edge of my bed at night. But of course that was wishful thinking. My brother is here, of course, and there's nothing much more that I can do about it. Grandma came over with a million of ideas about trying to get Fudge to eat. She tricked him by making milkshakes in a blender. When Fudge wasn't looking, she threw in an egg. Then she told him if he drank it all up, there'd be a surprise at the bottom. In the first time he believed her, he finished all of his milkshake. All he saw was an empty glass. There wasn't any surprise. Fudge got so mad he threw the glass down. It smashed into little pieces. And after that, Grandma left. The next day, my mother dragged Fudge to Dr. Cohn's office. He told her to leave him alone, that Fudge would eat when he got hungry. I remind my mother that I told her the same thing, and for free. But I guess my mother didn't believe either one of us, because she took Fudge to see three more doctors. None of them could find the thing wrong with my brother. One doctor even suggested that my mother cook fudge his favorite foods. So that night, my mother broiled lamb chops just for fudge. The rest of us ate stew. She served him the two little lamb chops on his plate under the table. Just the smell of them was making my stomach growl. I thought it was mean of my mother to make them for fudge and not for me. Fudge looked at his lamb chops for a few minutes. Then he pushed them away. No, he said, no chops. Fudgy, you'll starve, mothers cried. You must eat. No chops. Corn flakes, Fudge said. What corn flakes? My mother ran to get the cereal for Fudge. You can eat the chops if you want them, Peter, she told me. I reached down and I helped myself to the lamb chops. My mother handed Fudge his bowl of cereal but he didn't eat it. He sat at my feet and looked up at me. He watched me eat his chops. Eat your cereal, my father yelled. No, no, eat cereal, Fudge yelled. My father was really mad. His face turned bright red. He said, Fudge, you will eat that cereal if you will want it, or you will wear it. This was turning to be fun after all, I thought. The lamb chops were really tasty. I dipped the bone in some ketchup and he chewed away. Fudge messed around the cereal for a moment. Then he looked at my father and said, No, eat, no, eat, no, eat. My father wiped his mouth with his napkin, pushed back his chair and got up from the table. He picked up the bowl of cereal in one hand and Fudge in the other. He carried them both to the bathroom. I went along nibbling on the bone to see what was going to happen. My father stood Fudge in the tub and dumped the whole bowl of cereal right over his head. Fudge screamed, and he sure can scream loud. My father motioned for me to go back to the kitchen. He joined us for a minute. We sat down and finished our dinner. Fudge kept screaming. My mother wanted to go to him, but my father told her to stay where she was. He had enough of Fudge's monkey business at mealtimes. I think my mother really was relieved that my father had taken over. For once, my brother got what he deserved, and I was glad. <laughs> the next day, Fudge sat at the table again in his little red booster chair where he belongs. He ate everything my mother put in front of him. No more doggy, he said to us. And for a long time after that, his favorite expression was, eat it or wear it.
So that was chapter three. Chapter four. I gotta get a drink. <clears throat> so now he, so he was a dog, right? Now, my brother, the bird. Oh, I see Blomkers are on. Hello, hello girls. How you doing? I see the little wavy hand in the comments. <laughs> my brother, the bird. We live near Central Park. On nice days, I like to play there after school. I'm allowed to walk over by myself as long as I'm going to be with friends. My mother doesn't want me hanging around the park alone. For one thing, Jimmy Fargo has been mugged three times, twice for his bicycle and once for his money. Only he didn't have any money to give the muggers. I've never been mugged, but sooner or later I probably will be. My father told me what to do. Give the muggers whatever they want and try not to get hit in the head. Sometimes after you're mugged, you get to go to police headquarters. You look at a bunch of pictures of the crooks to see if you can recognize the guys that mugged you. I think it'd be neat to look at all those pictures. It's not that I want to get mugged because that would be really scary. It's just that Jimmy Fargo is always talking about his visit to police headquarters. My father got mugged once in the subway by two girls and a guy. He took his wallet and his briefcase. He still travels around by subways, but my mother doesn't. She sticks to buses and taxis. Both my mother and my father are always warning me to never talk to strangers in the park because a lot of people, bad people live around there. But even in that, it, I can't even, sorry, I can't even speak. Because a lot of bad people hang around there. We live on the west side of the park. If I want to get to the zoo and the pony carts, I have to walk all the way to the east side. Sometimes my mother walks across the park with Fudge. He likes the animals a lot, especially the monkeys. He also likes the helium-filled balloons, but as soon as my mother buys him one, he lets it go. I think he likes to see it float up into the sky. My mother says that's a waste of money, and she's not going to buy him any more balloons until he promises to not let go. On Sundays, the park is closed to traffic, and you can ride your bicycle all over without worrying about being run down by some crazy driver. Even Fudge can ride. He has a little blue toddle bike a present from my father's client. And when he's riding, he makes motorcycle noises. Vroom, 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 he calls. In the fall, the leaves turn darker and drop off into the tree from the trees. Sometimes there's a big leaf piles on the ground. It's fun to jump around in them. I never saw bright red, yellow, and orange leaves until the day my father took us for a drive in the country. The reason the leaves don't turn bright colors in New York, it's the air pollution. That's too bad, because yellow and orange and red leaves really look neat. One nice sunny afternoon, I called for Jimmy Fargo and we went to the park. Jimmy is the only kid on my block who's in my class at school, unless you count Sheila, and I don't. She lives in my building on the 10th floor. Henry, the elevator operator, is always making jokes about me and Sheila. He thinks we like each other. The truth is, I can't stand her. She's a real know-it-all. But I've discovered that most girls are. And by the way, Judy Bloom lovers, here's a book, otherwise known as Sheila the Great. Yes, otherwise known as Sheila the Great. Sheila? Yes, some of the same characters show up. There's a whole series of different fudge books and tales of what's going on, all that kind of good stuff. I just lost it. The worst thing about Sheila is the way she's always trying to touch me. And when she does, she yells, Peter got the cooties. Peter's got the cooties. And I don't believe in cooties anymore. When I was in second grade, I used to examine myself to see if I had them. But I never found any. By fourth grade, most kids give up on cooties. But not Sheila. She is still going strong. So I have to keep a safe distance from her. My mother thinks Sheila is the greatest. She's so smart, my mother says, and someday she's gonna be a real beauty. Now that's the funniest, because Sheila looks a lot like the monkeys that Fudge is so crazy about. So maybe she'll look beautiful to some ape, but never to me. Me and Jimmy have a special group of rocks where we like to play when we're in the park. 
We play a secret agent up there. Jimmy can imitate all kinds of foreign accents, probably because his father is a part-time actor. When he's not acting, he teaches a class at City College. Today, when we got to our rocks, who should be perched up there? Sheila. She was pretending to read a book, but I think she was just waiting for me and Jimmy to find out what we do when we found her on our own personal rocks. Hey, Sheila, I said, those are our rocks. Says who, she says. Come on, Sheila, he said, climbing up. You know me and Peter hang out here. Too bad for you, Sheila said. Oh, Sheila, I shouted, go find yourself another rock. I like this one, she says, if she owned the park. So why don't you two just go and find another rock? Just then, who should come tearing down the path? But Fudge. My mother was right behind him, hollering, Fudgy, wait for Mommy. But when Fudge gets going, he doesn't wait for anybody. He was after some pigeons. Birdie, 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 here, birdie, he called. Bad brother of mine loves birds, but he can't get it through his head that the birds aren't about to let him catch them. Hi, Mom, I said. My mother stopped running. Peter, am I glad to see you? I can't keep up with Fudge. Mrs. Hatcher, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila called, scrambling down from a rock. I'll watch Fudge for you. I'll take very good care of him. Can I, Mrs. Hatcher, please? Sheila jumped up and down and begged some more. Jimmy gave me an elbow to the ribs. He thought that my mother would let Sheila watch Fudge and that we'd be rid of her. We'd be free to play secret agent. But Jimmy didn't know that my mother would never trust Sheila with her dear little boy. Fudge, in the meantime, was screaming, Come back, Bertie! Come to Fudgy! Then my mother did a strange thing. She checked her watch and she said, you know, I do have to run back to the apartment. I forgot to turn on the oven. Do you really think you can keep on five, uh, uh, keep an eye on Fudge for just 10 minutes? Of course I can, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila said, and I know all about babysitting for my sister. Sheila's sister Libby is in seventh grade. She's about as beautiful as Sheila. The only difference is she's bigger. My mother hesitated. I don't know, she said. I've never left Fudge before. She looked at me. Peter, what? Will you and Jimmy help Sheila watch Fudge once I run home for just a minute? Oh, Mom, do we have to? Please, Peter, I'll be right back. I'll feel better if the three of you are watching him. <sighs> what do you say? I said to Jimmy. Sure, he answered. Why not? But I'm in charge of Fudgy, aren't I? Said Sheila, asked my mother. Well, I guess so. My mother said to Sheila, you probably do know more about babysitting. Why don't you all take Fudge to the playground? And then I'll know where, and I'll know where to find you. Swell, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila asked. Don't you worry, Fudgy will be fine. My mother turned to Fudge. Now you be a good boy for 10 minutes. Mommy will be right back, okay? Good boy, said Fudgy. Good, 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 good. As soon as my mother was gone, Fudgy took off. Can't catch me, can't catch Fudgy. Go get him, Sheila, I said, you're in charge, remember? Me and Jimmy horsed around while Sheila ran after Fudge. When she caught him, we decided we better go to the playground, like my mother said. It was a lot easier to keep an eye on him in a smaller place. Anyway, Fudge likes to climb on the jungle gym, and that way he can't get lost. As soon as we got to the playground, Sheila started chasing me. Peter's got the cooties, Peter's got the cooties, she yelled. Oh, cut that out, I said. She chased Jimmy. Jimmy's got the cooties. Jimmy's got the cooties. Me and Jimmy decided to fight back. So what if she's a girl? She started it. So he grabbed her by the arms. She scrummed and tried to get away from us, but we wouldn't let go. We hollered really loud. Sheila's got the cooties. Sheila's got the cooties. All three of us were so busy fooling around that we didn't notice Fudge up in the jungle gym until he called, Peta, Peta. That's how he says my name. What, I said. See, see, Fudge flapped his arms around. Fudgy's a birdie, Fudgy's a birdie, fly, birdie, fly. Oh, that crazy kid, I thought, running to the jungle gym with Jimmy and Sheila right behind me. But it was too late. Fudge already found out that he didn't have wings. He fell to the ground. He was screaming and crying and his face was a mess of blood. I can't even tell where the blood was coming from at first. And then Jimmy handed me his handkerchief. I don't know how clean it was, but it was better than nothing. And I mopped off some of the blood off of Fudge's face. 
Sheila cried, it wasn't my fault, I honest, it wasn't. Oh, shut up, I told her. He's really a mess, Jimmy said, inspecting Fudge, and his teeth are gone, too. What are you talking about? I asked Jimmy. Look at his mouth, Jimmy said. Now while he's screaming, see? He's got a big space where he used to have front teeth. Oh, no, Sheila screamed. He's right, Fudge's teeth are gone. Fudge stopped crying for a minute. All gone, he said. Open your mouth wide, I said. He did and he looked in. It was truth. His top two teeth were missing. My mother is going to kill you, Sheila, I said. Was I glad I was not left in charge of taking care of my brother? Sheila cried harder. But it was an accident. He did it to himself. He did it to himself. You better find his teeth, I said. Where should I look? Sheila asked. On the ground, stupid. Sheila crawled along looking for Fudge's teeth and while I tried to clean them up some more. See? Fudgy was showing me all of his wounds. Boo-boo here, and boo-boo here, and more boo-boo here. His knees and elbows were all scraped up. I'm going to get your mother, Jimmy hollered, running out of the playground. Good idea, I called. I just can't find them, Sheila said. Well, keep looking, I yelled. Honestly, Peter, there aren't any teeth here. All gone? Fudgy asked again. No, I told him just two. Fudge started to scream, watch my teeth, watch my teeth. Jimmy must have met my mother on the way back to the park because it was only about two minutes for her to get there. By that time, a whole crowd of kids gathered around us. Most of them were crawling around the ground like Sheila looking for Fudge's teeth. And my mother came and picked up Fudge. Oh, my baby, my precious, my little love. She kissed him all over. Show mommy where it hurts. Fudge showed her all his boo-boos and he said, All gone. What's all gone, my mother asked. His top two front teeth. Oh, no, my mother cried. Oh, my poor little angel. She was sniffed and said, I just can't find him, Mrs. Hatcher. I looked everywhere, but Fudge's teeth are gone. He must have swallowed them, mother said, looking into Fudge's mouth. Oh, Mrs. Hatcher, how awful, how awful. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really, really sorry, Sheila cried. What will happen to him? You'll be all right, Sheila, my mother said. I'm sure it was an accident. Nobody's blaming you. Sheila started bawling again. My mother said, let's go home now. I thought my mother was being pretty easy on Sheila. After all, she was the one who was left in charge. When we got home, Mom washed Fudge's cuts and scrapes with peroxide. Then she called Dr. Cohn. He told her to take Fudge to our dentist. So my mother called Dr. Brown's office and made an appointment for the next day. When that was done, she gave Fudge some socks to play with. I went into the kitchen to have a glass of juice, and my mother followed me. Peter Warren Hatcher, she said. I'm sorry that I can't trust you for just 10 minutes. Me, I asked. Trust me? What's this got to do with me? My mother raised her voice. I left my your brother with you for 10 minutes, and just look what happened. I am disgusted with you. It was Sheila's fault, I said. You and Sheila, you said Sheila was in charge. So how come you're mad at me and not at Sheila? I just am, my mother shouted. I ran to my room, and I slammed the door. I watched Tribble walk around on his favorite rock. My mother's the meanest mother in the whole world, I told my Tribble. She loves Fudge more than me. She doesn't even love me anymore. And she doesn't even like me. Maybe I'm not even her real son. Maybe somebody left me on a blanket on the doorstep. My real mother's probably a, a beautiful princess. I bet she'd like to have me back. Nobody needs me around here, that's for sure. I didn't eat much for supper that night. And I had a lot of trouble falling asleep. The next morning, my mother came into my room and sat down on my bed. I didn't look at her. Peter, she said. I didn't answer. Peter, I said some things yesterday that I didn't really mean. I looked at her, honest? I asked. Yes, you see, I was very upset over Fudge's accident, and I had to blame somebody. So I picked on you. Yes, I said, you sure did. It wasn't your fault, though, and I know that. It was an accident, and it could have happened even though if I had been on the playground myself. 
He wanted to fly, I said. He thought he was a bird. I don't think he'll try to fly again, my mother said. Me either, I said. Then we both laughed, and I knew she was my real mother after all. All right, and so that was the end of chapters three and four. Oh, I even see that my husband is watching this. <laughs> hello, Patrick. I think you're in the basement. <laughs> oh, hey, Boutines. Hello, Boutines. Hello, hello. Well, it's so good. It's so <laughs> good seeing all of you guys. So we're going to have to pick up. Let's, oh, sorry about that. I'm trying to find our song. So, so I just, you know, it, ugh, I can't even speak. So that ever happened to you where sometimes you get in, in trouble with something and you don't even expect it or, 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 you know, you're just feeling kind of hurt and, you know, but then it's, it's nice to be able to say, I'm sorry, or take some sort of responsibility for it. And, but Fudge, he is always getting into some sort of problem. Okay. So I'm going to pull up some schoolhouse rock. So everybody get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. We got to be doing some dancing. We got to get dancing. Okay. And we're going to be learning about um, Interplanet Janet. Oh, Sister Kathy's on here. Hello, Sister Kathy. Oh, oh I miss you so much, Sister Kathy. Oh my gosh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> It's so good to see you, Sister Kathy. Come, join me. <laughs> um, anyway, everybody stand up. We're going to do Interplanet Janet from Schoolhouse Rock. We learn all about the planets. Though Pluto, I think, is not around anymore. They say our solar system is centered around the sun. Nine planets large and small parading by. Except we're not Pluto anymore. Pluto's... <laughs> Actually, they now know that Pluto technically isn't a planet. Never been a 
All righty. Yes, Pluto apparently is not a planet anymore, but that's a, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. But with that, thank you so much. And keep standing, keep standing. And let's close. Okay, so remember your challenge today, get outside, make a heart, take some pictures of it. Have a wonderful day. I love you all. I miss you and we will see you tomorrow.